All right, boys, buckle in. You guys have been asking me for a new story time video for like six freaking years. Today's the day. You're about to hear a tale of probably the most uncomfortable, embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. And it only happened like a month ago. <laughs> And shout out to Dylan McGee, Theory TK. He's getting the gameplay for this video, just like old times, like the old school story time videos. And I want to preface this video by saying the only reason this happened is because I'm stupid. I should know better, but I'm dumb and I watch too many romantic movies and I'm a big softy. Long story short, this is an embarrassing story about me that should have never seen the light of day, that should have just faded off with the annals of history. But the other person involved opened the floodgates and well, the hilarity of this story just overrides my own embarrassment and the people People must know. <laughs> so without further ado, this is the story of the most traumatizing, uncomfortable, embarrassing interaction I've ever had with a girl gamer. And funny enough, it all begins on Call of Duty. <laughs> We started playing COD, we met through some mutuals, we got to talking. And by talking, I mean we were spending three or four hours a night on the phone, just detailing our entire lives, telling us about all our past experiences, you know, talking about any and everything for like an entire week straight. And like I said, I watched too many romantic movies and I was like, oh, you know, where I'm really hitting it off with this girl, you know, maybe I should fly her out and we could go on these dates that we've been talking about and go do all these things that we are talking about maybe doing one day. And this is where I should have known better. Someone of my age, should you should take a lot longer to get to know someone before you, you know, invite them to your home and stuff. But nope, I was smitten. Not simping, smitten. <laughs> but yeah, after like, you know, a week of talking, you know, we booked her flight. And literally not, but two hours later, I learned that the person that I had been talking to this whole time about almost every detail of each other's lives said that she had to tell me a few things before she came and visited. Now I'm immature so the first thing I'm thinking I'm like god damn it she's got a dick. <laughs> And thank God it wasn't anything like that, but still. The first thing she tells me is she has like a nine-year-old kid, which to me is by no way a deal breaker or anything I have any apprehension against. So it wasn't in any way like an off-putting thing. A little odd that you hadn't mentioned this for the whole week that we'd been talking, but little did I know that was just the tip of the iceberg. She then mentioned that she's deathly allergic to dogs. Now everyone knows me and Marble. You know, he's literally, it follows me everywhere. He sleeps with me every night. And we got Theory's dog, Baby Gee, here. This house is literally full of dogs. Now, I was smitten, so obviously now I'm thinking, oh, wow, like if I end up dating this girl, I got to get rid of my dog. And that's just like, I wouldn't get rid of Marble for anyone. Natalie Portman could hit me up and be like, yo, you down? And I've been like, no, not if you're allergic to dogs. She could have shown up dressed like Padme Amidala in her dog allergy, and I would have been like, no, sorry. And for the whole time she came to visit, which was like her trip was for like three days, I had to put Marble out in the hall. He's barking, scratching at my door because he literally sleeps with me every night. Broke my damn heart. Not to mention I had to like clean my house like a goddamn CSI investigator. I'm talking like triple vacuumed everything, washed everything, wiped every single surface. Because, you know, obviously anyone comes to visit, you don't want your house to kill them. And I have a Pomeranian too, notoriously bad for people with dog allergies. But again, this was not everything. Now I mentioned before we had talked about going on dates and we had, we talked about all our favorite restaurants, the foods we like to eat, all these things that we could go do, all these places in Atlanta I could take her to go eat at. But nope, the reason why she has the dog allergy is the exact same reason she has an extreme gluten allergy, which I've become quite accustomed to. A lot of my friends have gluten allergies and you know, obviously there's a whole lot of restaurants that even pass their like super, gluten-free apps that they have to go like triple check restaurants to make sure they have different cooking areas and everything's actually gluten-free so no big deal there either well but that was not all and this was the fact that she quote didn't even want to tell me until she was here in person but that this other girl gamer that she was fighting with found out about this and started spatting it all around the internet so she had to tell me now again two hours after we have booked her flight after spending a whole week on the phone talking about every detail of our lives she forgot to mention this thing apparently she has a rather extreme version of Crohn's disease and that she had recently spent a very long time in the hospital getting her small intestine and her butthole removed and getting uh, I forget the name of the procedure, but basically where they connect your intestine to your the front of your stomach and you have what's called the colostomy bag so that you can, you know, have bowel movements. Now, I'm still smitten at this point thinking like, oh, okay, you know, we can, you know, I'm not so shallow, you know, that that would instantly put me off a person. 
But as time went on and in the few days that we had until she came to visit, the more and more I thought about it, it's like I could not believe that you would not tell me these things before we book your flight to come spend a romantic weekend with somebody. And of course, I tried to handle it as much like a gentleman as possible. You know, like, don't worry, we will find restaurants you can go to and all this stuff. And she was like, well, no, I really have an extreme allergy. I can only eat certain foods that we'll have to go get from the grocery store, but I'll just watch you eat. And she did, to her credit, for the next three days, every time we went out, she would order something but never actually eat it. Which I understand, she's got this extreme medical condition, but yeah, she just sat there and watched me eat, which again, is just further, like, I just kept thinking about it, like, why wouldn't you mention any of these things before, like, we booked this trip? But no, I had it in my mind, and I was determined that I wasn't going to be just be a jerk and cancel the trip, as I feel like most people probably would have. And But, you know, we did get along and I figured, hey, well, in the worst case scenario, we'll spend a nice weekend together being kind of friends and going doing fun things. And plus, you know, I am, again, a romantic. So I was holding off on the fact that, you know, maybe there's something, you know, we'll hit it off so great that it will override all these failures to mention these life changing, life altering things that, you know, we that are pretty important to come in and getting to know to someone. But, you know, I figured, hey, it is what it is. You know, I'm stupid. Yeah, I, I rushed into it. These are the consequences man's word is important you know type of thing honor and all that <laughs> i should have canceled but no i went and picked her up from the airport like a few days later first thing i noticed is that she looks nothing like the girl that i've been watching on stream all week obviously some filters had been deployed but i'm figuring hey i deserve that <laughs> And of course, this whole time, I know I'm safe for at least 24 hours because I had made it abundantly clear that I am not the type of guy to sleep with a girl on the first date. You know, I'm not the type that's going to try and kiss you on the first time we meet. You know, mama raised a gentleman. Again, Padme Amidala could show up. Natalie Portman would reach in. I'd be like, no, let's at least know each other 24 hours before we start being intimate. You got to remember, guys, I'm old. So being an elder millennial with a sense of romance you know, is a normal thing for my age group. But yeah, I was safe. So, you know, we came, we went to Target. We bought her all the stuff that she needed. You know, we went home. You know, she unpacked for a little bit. We went out to dinner. And on the ride home, that's when it hit me. All of a sudden, I realized that this girl's staying in my room and she's probably going to try and cuddle with me. So I'm already kind of nervous about this. But no, I was just being immature. And we got home, you know, we, we laid in bed and we watched the movie and she didn't have, and she didn't even try. You know, we were at like, you know, an arm's length distance the whole time. And the whole time we're laying there watching like four movies because I just kept on putting them on. <laughs> now I know this is going to make me sound really immature and insensitive and mean. But I told you guys I was going to tell you a story that embarrassed me. But the whole time I was thinking, God, she just smells so bad. <laughs> and I just felt so bad for her at the same time because she'd just gone through this really traumatic experience. So it's like all these conflicting emotions of like, oh, man, I can't really be mad because she's just obviously shy about this medical procedure that she had to have. And I just felt terrible for her. But at the same time, she did smell so bad. But after like the fourth movie, we finally went to sleep and it was good. That was the first night. Now, the second second day I believe we got up and we went to like Barnes Nobles because I had told her we were going to go do a bunch of stuff and I really wanted to go to all these places with someone and have some fun. We went to like P.F. Chang's for dinner because they had gluten free and that apparently that, that location passed my friend's apps muster for being gluten free. She watched me eat. It was jovial. We both had a good time. And then we went to go see a movie. I took her out to a movie. We went and saw like Wolverine and Deadpool. Deadpool and Wolverine. It was really good. I actually, that movie was hilarious. I bought popcorn and candy, and it was a great time, actually. I actually ate way too much Sour Patch Kids. I didn't feel good after that. But little did I know the bombshell that I was about to walk into, because literally halfway home through our drive, which was only like 20 minutes, she turns at me and hits me with the, what are we? Now, I understand, you know, being curious about your standings with someone and what's going on. Usually, it's not within 24 hours of meeting somebody. I usually don't hit my, you know, my basically the equivalent of a first date with the what are we. But again, I started to feel a little bad because obviously she was curious of whether she was a homie or someone I was interested in. Because although we had talked a whole lot and she was, she had flown out to meet me, we were I wasn't overly forward. You know, it was definitely a, a meeting to see if we liked each other, to spend some time with each other. You know, we're both adults in our 30s. But no, she was adamant. She wanted an answer. And I tried to skate it by saying, you know, isn't it better not knowing? Like we're still getting to know each other. Do you really want to you know, so quickly put a label on it type of thing. She didn't take it like as, you know, I would think most girls would maybe be a little sad that I didn't say, hey, I like you a whole lot or, it's you know, some romantic thing. Because I was also, you know, not sad, but, you know, a little, 
you know, I was hoping to meet somebody, you know, type of thing. So I was, we were both very obviously a little disappointed. But nope, Curveball won. She got mad at me. Started saying things like, I wasn't used to an intelligent woman. Talking about how many degrees she has, which amounted to like a bunch of associate's degrees. She said she had a bachelor's degree at one point and then later said she didn't. She had told me she had this good job where she was starting her own medical practice to offer like therapy or life coaching and stuff that she had to get all these degrees and certifications for to do. Something that I had said previously before that I found attractive that she was, you know, obviously accomplished and intelligent and stuff like that. All that started to unravel, really. I found out later she's really just living off of child support and medical disability, which I should have probably known right from the get because no one that streams all night long and sleeps all day can run a medical practice. <laughs> but I digress. She got mad at me, but I was able to cool her down and to just, you know, basically say, you know, we'll find out type of thing. Because, you know, there was still about 2 or 3% of me that was hopeful. And it hit me again that, oh, no, she's going to try and cuddle. Like, uh, we had talked about it in text messages beforehand. She's definitely going to try this. And I swear, she scooched me over. To, I was I have a king-size bed. This thing's big. I was on, like, the, the left-hand 3% of that shit, hanging half off that. My arm's, like, swinging in the air. Like, I have moved over to the point where if I'm going to fall over, if she scooches over anymore. And the absolute one time that I touched her during this entire trip, I, like, patted her on the shoulder. <laughs> I like moved my thigh a little bit near her so she felt like she was being cuddled, but I was on my back. <laughs> I was so uncomfortable. I've never been more uncomfortable. I have a newfound respect for women that I've had to deal with like overzealous guys, like try to like put their arm around them or like scooch in and be a little closer than you want them to be. I have a newfound respect for that, ladies. I know what it feels like now to be that uncomfortable. <laughs> But no, this to end it just basically pissed her off. She got mad, started saying crazy stuff. But no, she 100% switched over the sad part and got instantly to the mad. And to be honest, she had a point. You know, she was saying that I flew her out here. You know, she's staying in my bed. Why am I not trying to kiss her? All these things. You know, and to be fair, she does have a point. But to be fair, I had a point too. She should have said all these things before we agreed to meet, you know, all this kind of stuff. Kind of withheld a whole lot of things. She even stormed out of the room at one point. And I'm thinking, where'd she go? <laughs> so I waited a few minutes and went looking for her. She was just like walking around my office, looking around this room that I hadn't even shown her yet. She apologized, saying she was just being bratty or something like that. And, you know, we went back downstairs. Obviously, I started apologizing profusely over and over and over again because I am sorry. You know, not only for the fact that I'm not touching her at all, but also because, you know, she's obviously hurt and, you know, Mama raised a gentleman. I have I have empathy. I felt bad. And basically, I drowned out the rest of the night by putting on a movie after a movie after a movie. Just endless movies. <laughs> and this is only funny because the next night, well, the next day, I'm getting ahead of myself. The next day, you know, we wake up and obviously we had slept in because we would stayed up all night watching movies, like till the daylight. She started hitting me with the things like, can we at least go do this? Can we at least do that? Obviously upset, not getting what you wanted. And I couldn't kind of take it after a while. I was eventually I was just like, yo, know, I get it. I get it. I'll get up right now. I can hear you. Can you at least this? Like, I'm getting up right now. I'm going to go shower and then we'll go. And again, she had a problem with this and got super mad that I even made that little tiny joke. Literally had a full blown like argument with me while I'm just standing in, in the doorway of my bathroom, like trying to go shower. And the whole time I'm trying to be nice and just play it down. But she's obviously upset again, saying that you're not used to dealing with intelligent women thing, which I don't know where she gets from, because obviously I'm not bashing anybody that doesn't have degrees or does have degrees. But she's got a couple of associates degrees. She knows I, I went to law school. I know, like, you know, at least 100 people that have doctorates like and a good percentage of them were women. So I don't understand where, you know, plus my women in my family are very well accomplished, all have degrees, all very successful careers and babies, big families. You know, I am surrounded by a bunch of absolutely amazing female role models. And she knew that because I told her all about them. She's basically trying to blame me for not liking her because she was smart, I think was the point she was trying to make, which I don't know. I didn't think she had very much emotional intelligence because instead of like being sad or disappointed, you just instantly went to angry, like crazy eyed, angry, talking to me like I was a child. Like, oh, it was it was nuts. But I defused the situation yet again. And we went to I, th I actually think this is the night we went to P.F. Chang's. We went to some other place the other night. 
And by this time, it was a little late, so we couldn't really go do anything else. I tried to go ask her to see if she wanted to go see another movie in theaters, and she was like, ah, oh, I feel like all we've done since I got here was watch movies. And I literally, it took, I'm telling you guys, it took everything in me not to laugh out loud. Because <laughs> it wasn't my entire game plan. <laughs> So we didn't go see the movie in theaters. Instead, we went home, and I, I, I guess I'm a smart ass at heart. I put on a TV show. <laughs> it was some terrible Spanish knockoff of another movie called Inside Man with Clive Owens. It was called Bank Heist or something like that. Literally every single part of that show was just out of this movie. But I was addicted, and we watched that shit nine episodes straight. As again, after we've already kind of had a couple talks about, you know, just being friends and taking it slow, and I had told her, I, you know, I'm slow to warm to people. She kept doing the nuzzling up against me thing. She wore, like, some sexy lingerie inside of a robe to cover, obviously, so I couldn't see her colostomy bag, which I never, ever saw the whole entire time, because I didn't go near her. <laughs> But she kept on nuzzling against me. I'm on the end of the 5% of the bed. I don't even have poor marble here to like stick in between us, sacrifice the homie. Like, sorry, tiny, tiny down. <laughs> I need you to separate us. I couldn't even use tiny. But at this point, she's actually gotten very upset, is very hurt, very angry that I didn't try to kiss her because she said that multiple times, that I wasn't cuddling with her. She said over and over that I, I flew her out on false pretenses, which is crazy in and of itself because obviously we were, you know, flying together two strangers that only known each other a week, you know, or two week and a half to meet. She said I flew her out on false pretenses and she was legitimately angry at me that I hadn't made a move or even tried to do anything and then I'm you know being the whole I'm sorry you know I think we should just be friends you know I just it wasn't a love match sparks didn't fly you know I didn't I didn't I didn't I guess I didn't have those feelings for you once we met and she demanded a reason and I mean that in the most literal way she looked at me and said what's the reason now obviously the whole time I'm thinking okay I have to say anything but the colostomy back <laughs> And she just, and I kept skating and she kept demanding a reason over and over and over again. But the one thing I could think of that was the least mean and the least having to do with anything that she can't help was I was like, well, you did kind of use filters on your stream. I didn't know you did that. We actively made fun of girl gamers together that used filters. Like this is something we had kidded about and kind of made fun of girls for doing because filters are lame and no one should use them. <laughs> I said, well, when you showed up, not that you're not pretty, but I, you know, I've been looking at this stream for a week, you know, for however, the 10 hours that you streamed every single night, thinking you looked one way and you showed up looking like a completely different person. And she was still pretty. It wasn't like, and I'm being honest there, like she it wasn't like she was unpretty with the filter, but obviously looked very different. And boy, did I regret fucking saying that. <laughs> she did not let that one go. I even apologized over and over for saying it. But she was like, what the f And she got mad eventually and just stormed out of my room. Grabbed her luggage and stormed out. Again. So I was like, holy shit, she's probably going to leave. You know, her flight's in like 10 hours. You know, maybe she'll just go to the airport. So I went looking. Well, actually, no. I, <laughs> I finished watching the episode of that show first. <laughs> And then I went looking for her. No, she had moved down into the guest bedroom, which we had always said that she might have to go. So we would go stay in, you know, if she, the dogs, the fur was too much because the dogs don't ever go in the guest bedroom. But no, we kind of talked it out. You know, she was obviously very angry. I was just apologizing. She was very hurt. We talked for like 30 minutes with me standing at the door and her just fiddling with stuff, just obviously angry, you know, but I talked it down as much as I could. And I was like, all right, we well, you know we should probably go to sleep. You know, I, I'm going to go upstairs and you know, I got to take you to the airport in like four hours. And I live like an hour and a half outside of Atlanta with traffic. So it, it's no short trip. So I went upstairs and I blissfully laid my head on the pillow, knowing that this tragedy, this traumatizing experience was over. Feeling safe for the first time in my own bed. And like four, in like four days, I drifted off to sleep. Now in comes the most horrifying part of the story. Now I am asleep. But I sleep very light, so if there's a door opening or anything happens, I'm going to wake up. All of a sudden, I hear my door open. <laughs> now, I'm laying with my face away from the door, and I wake up, but I didn't, like, wake up and jump or anything. I just opened my eyes, and I feel someone laying down in my bed. <laughs> Now, the last time I checked, she was down in the guest bedroom getting some sleep before we took her home because obviously we were friends at that point, and she wasn't. She made a point she wasn't going to sleep in my bed if we were just going to be friends. 
Nope, she lays down in my bed. And I sit completely fucking still, like a goddamn horror movie, <laughs> trying not to move for fear that she might try to yell at me again. But I did very, like, I waited like five minutes and I just barely, like, whisked over my head, full knowing that it was like a 50 50 gamble. She could either be looking straight at me and I might jump and die from shock, or she would be leaning the other way with her wet hair looking like the ring. Thankfully, when I glanced over, she was faced the other way and it was just on top of the covers, just laying there. Not talking, moving, barely, I couldn't hear her breathing. I turned back over there and just try to pretend like I'm still asleep. <laughs> frozen in fear of this person who's come into my room and laid in my bed but thankfully after like 20 minutes she got up and left i couldn't fucking sleep after that i put on another episode of that stupid bank heist show oh my god i was traumatized so again i have a newfound respect for you ladies if there's any listening to this video if you've ever been put in an uncomfortable situation that shit is a lot worse than people probably give you credit for Having someone lay next to you that you do not want anywhere near you is very traumatizing. Especially if it's at like 5 a.m. in the goddamn morning. Oh, but thank God this trip is ending. And of course, we wake up. I go down. She's in the guest bedroom. She's already packed and ready to go. Obviously, she didn't go back to sleep either. And we get in the car and I go drop her off. I give her a very friendly hug goodbye and tell, tell her sorry yet again. And she goes off into the airport. And I, and I climb back into my car and I breathe the first breath of relief I've had in three or four days. I swear to God, I drove home with like the biggest smile on my face. This is so relieved. So thank God that life gets to go back to normal. Thank God I get my dog back. I, I don't think I mentioned that but one time. But not having my dog with me every night. I mean, he literally is my shadow. Always with me. All the damn time. I work from home. Literally having to have him outside in the hallway for three or four days uh, just scarred me. Like hearing him whimper out there. having you know, he, Luckily, he went and slept with my roommate, Dylan. Dylan, he lives with me. I don't know if I mentioned that. But yeah, at least he got to go sleep with him and his dog. So he wasn't alone just out there in the cold or I would have literally said no I would have went and slept in the hallway with him Overjoyed and then you know all that stuff for the vlog happened Teddy randomly came to visit <laughs> Literally knowing that I was going on this fishing trip showed up, you know three or four days beforehand flying so of course as soon as she left Teddy arrived basically we did the whole vlog and then I went on this amazing fishing trip with my my uncles and my dad and my cousins and we didn't catch a whole lot of fish but it was a whole lot of fun we ate so much food it was it was amazing everyone that follows my IG you know saw all the stories I posted I managed to get one picture with one fish the other two were so small I just threw them back <laughs> We didn't catch any reds, so if you guys know about my fishing trips, we always go down. We usually go fishing when the reds are running, and that's what we're trying to catch. Not these stinky tiny blues, but anyways. And I almost forgot, this whole time she's sending me like selfies with the message, ha look, no filter. I, I, I'm not wearing a filter tonight because of you. I'm just like ignoring him, and this went on for days. <laughs> we had talked extensively, and I'm talking a lot, um, about, you know, keeping our own personal business private. Uh, up until the point where like we're an established relationship that we want to go public with, you know, just because so that our private business would remain private. And for some reason, I thought there was no way that she would go around talking about the situation. What girl will go around telling people that she flew out to some guy's house and he wouldn't even touch her? I mean, who actually goes around and tells that story? But no, I, I grossly underestimated how hurt this girl was. Now, I had been excommunicado with just about everybody for, you know, that week and a half, two weeks because, you know, I was on a fishing trip. But when I got back, I came back to basically a flood of messages from a whole lot of different people. You know, she's running around telling everybody your business. I had screenshots of Twitch chats, of their Twitch chats asking about cost flying out. Now, I hadn't told a soul, absolutely no one. I wanted no one to know this traumatizing story. Funny now that I'm telling everybody. But obviously, she had gone around telling everybody our business, saying that she was going to expose me for flying around under false pretenses and then not liking her, which again, it sounds crazy to me, but that was actually what she was going to do. I'm getting group calls from everyone we know mutually. Telling me, yeah, she's been running around saying this. She's been telling this. She told this person. They're telling everybody. And I'm like, God damn it. Like, wow, you know. Kind of funny that the one time I fly out a girl and don't hook up with her, that's the story everyone hears. <laughs> 
And to be honest, I deserve that. You know, well, you know, it is what it is. I was stupid. I should have known better. I should have seen the red flags or, you know, at least guessed that they existed. But again, again, I, I, I retain the fact that there was, we talked for an entire week, five, six hours a damn night, three or four. I was minimizing how long we talked. So I didn't look as much like a simp. We talked a lot and she never mentioned any of those things for a whole entire week. But then this literally, we booked the flight two hours later. Together with the filters and the catfishing, I, I know, I, although I'm embarrassed about the story, I don't. I still feel like I handled it like a gentleman. I was nice. I still bought flowers, opened car doors, paid for dinners and dates, kept everything light and funny, even when that person was angry and obviously upset. But nope, none of that was enough. So the floodgates were open, and now I got to go kind of address that. So I, I went into their Discord that we all kind of share and said, hey, you know, people's private business should be people's private business. I hope everyone here respects everyone's privacy and so that when you've agreed to be friends, don't climb into each other's bed like a predator. <laughs> and I admit that last part was probably taking it too far because she did not take this line down. I thought she would kind of like take the hint because if she had told no one about it, no one would have any idea what I was talking about. It was like a little subtweet that only she would understand. But no, she had told everybody. So not and most people didn't know who I was talking about, but enough knew that it was very obvious, you know. And of course they're in their group chats calling me like, "Oh my god, we just read what you said." All the people she had told, obviously. And one of those people was actually a really close friend of mine and was a little upset that I didn't tell him. <laughs> He had to hear this through the grapevine. But nope, that's right when her craziness unraveled and everyone got to see what I had to spend a week with. She starts posting all our text messages, like just straight up screenshots. I was replying to each one, gross! <laughs> saying that I was lying, that I was calling her a predator and all this stuff, and that was untrue. And it was obviously kind of a joke, but she did climb into a bed after like we had agreed not to sleep together. I mean, that is fucking terrifying. I, don't, I mean, maybe I'm overdoing it because I've never been in a situation like that before, but gee, it was terrifying. And the whole time she's saying, I'm starting this. And I was like, no, nah, I literally had to say it over and over again that like you told all these people. I didn't tell a soul. So how does everyone know? Unless you got, were hurt and went around telling everybody to get like revenge, I guess, that I flew you out was somehow going to embarrass me. And it did. <laughs> it is. It's embarrassing. As you guys can tell, the story is embarrassing. And she's sitting there saying she told no one that you know I was getting false information from people. By the way, the whole time, the people that she told, all the whole group of them, are literally in a group call with me laughing their asses off. And I'm typing there like, the people you told are literally laughing at you right now, reading these messages because you literally told them. And they're, they're sitting there you know, laughing their fucking asses off. And she's like, no, that's not true. Just... Just gaslighting out of wazoo, just being completely insane. But no, she eventually quit. <laughs> she just deleted all her messages and left the Discord. And I thought to myself, damn, this would make a really funny fucking story time video. <laughs> So there you guys go. The most embarrassing goddamn story I've ever told you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, I almost forgot. Just like Photo Beach, she threatened to sue me if I made this video. I don't know what's with you crazy girl gamers well, that you think you can sue everybody. And just like in that Discord chat, I never mentioned you by name. You came in there and said it was you because you want this attention. I have left everything extremely anonymous here. And my friends that I asked advice about this said, no, she's crazy. She wants this attention. You're giving it to her. And I totally agree, but it's so funny that it, it overpowers my selfish need not to be embarrassed. Funny wins. I can't say that in my videos and not live by it when it applies to me. If something's so goddamn funny that it overrides your personal need or want for something to remain private, nope, not when you're a public figure. I've said that in my videos before, and just so you guys know, I live by what I say. I will fucking embarrass myself by telling a just ridiculously traumatizing story for views. <laughs> so drop a like if you guys enjoyed it. Write a comment about finally you got a goddamn story time video after asking me for so long. And then also say W gameplay for Dylan because yeah, he came up into my office and got all these kills. That wasn't me. Just like it was in the old videos. Had to keep everything old school. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good night.